Are we hiring for success in corrections? Well, I certainly hope for. Let's talk about it. Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. You know, when we hire people, many times I've seen agencies say, we have to fill these slots. We're down by 20. Human resources, come on, let's get these slots filled. Well, is it just about filling slots and throwing a body in that position? I hope not. I hope that we are taking our hiring process seriously because, hey, whenever you build something, don't you always want a good foundation to start from when you're building a building or building anything? You want a good foundation. Well, let's hope that our background investigators and human resources and our human resources people are trying to provide our um, our, our management and our frontline trainers who have to train these new uh, rookies with somebody who has some sort of foundation built already. Now, there's an old saying, give me attitude any day and I will take a good attitude and I can train the rest. And I believe that's true. Look, folks, we when we hire people, they're not correctional officers. I mean, they've never been a correctional officer before, most of them. Some transfer from other agencies over to your agency, but most of them have never been a correctional officer before, so we have to train them. But we do want somebody with a good attitude. And I really believe that uh, our interviewing process for hiring, our background checks, and looking at what this person who has applied to be a correction officer has done with their past life can tell a big story and it can tell us if they have a good attitude. That's what we need. We need people with good attitudes and retainable officers. We need to hire people that we have a good chance of retaining. Doesn't mean that they're all going to stay and make this uh, their retirement, but my gosh, if we could get a good 10 years out of somebody, uh, we want people that are retainable and will stay with us for a while. So we need to do a good job in hiring. Um, if we get the uh, rookie officer with the right attitude, it's our responsibility to teach that officer correctly. Okay, so we need to uh, then hire these people and put them through the academy and watch them closely in the academy, phase two after hiring. You know, if you're an instructor at the Correctional Officer Academy, you can pick out who has good attitude, bad attitude, who has issues, who does not. Let's watch them in the academy and also see if we see any signs that could cause us a problem later on. And of course we want, everybody has to pass the, uh, courses with a certain percentage, uh, many states are 80% uh, on your test or above. Uh, our state here in Florida has the uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement exam. You also must pass after the academy before you can go to work at the uh, prison or the jail. So there's some boundaries there that help us find out if a person has what it takes to get through the academy in the self-defense portion in the firearms portion, and in the academic portion. So there's another phase that helps along the way. But now here is a huge phase when we get into the rookie year, the probationary status. This is where we are responsible for training an officer and making sure they know their job before we cut them loose on their own. And it is up to our uh, training staff to do a good job. Okay, you want to train the officer and make sure they understand each step as you're training. You do not want to be their buddy. You, you can be a good trainer, a good co-worker, teach them that we back up each other and cover each other's back 24-7. But right now they're in the training stage. Let's don't be buddies. Let's be teachers because what happens when you're training an officer and you really like them and you start to become their buddy, you may cut them a little slack here and there. We want to train hard. We want to train good. Let's don't give any slack in training. When we train an officer, 
please never get caught up in saying, uh, this is the way we do it every time. I, I don't like that saying, this is the way we do it every time. Because, yes, we're going to follow policy and procedure. You want to teach those officers where to find policy and procedure and make sure they're studying that when they have downtime or even when they're off duty, they make sure they're studying that while you're giving them training, hands-on training. But every scenario is different, and we have to teach our new rookie officers that we're going to follow policy and procedure, but everything isn't just a straight arrow. Every emergency we respond to in corrections has a little different twist. So we're not going to do everything the same way every time. And I've heard people teach that this is the way we do this every time. No, we don't. We don't. Everything has a twist. Being a correction officer is, is, is uh, you're, you're the law enforcement of the prison and you're responding to incidents and everyone is different. Believe me, every suicide is a little bit done, is done a little bit differently. Every fight you respond to is a little bit different. Maybe it's one-on-one, -on -one, maybe it's gang-related, maybe there's weapons involved, maybe there is not weapons involved. You see what I'm saying? Everything you respond to is not always the same. Um, expose the trainee to different trainers, okay? So that the trainee or the rookie officer gets to see different officers' perspectives on how they handle their shift how they handle the inmates, and how they handle responding to incidents. Now remember, when you're assigning trainers to train officers, please assign trainers that are knowledgeable of all areas of the prison and jail. How many times have we seen a trainer assigned to teach a rookie officer and fill out the paperwork that they've been trained in a certain area and they have their little, very little experience themselves. And you sit back and say, man, that person really doesn't know that job yet themselves. Don't put somebody in a train to train a rookie officer that is still trying to figure out the job themselves. You're not helping that rookie officer. Remember, we're taking that foundation of a positive attitude. We're hoping human resources did their job in hiring somebody that can have that positive attitude and has a good background, has a clean background. And then we're hoping that the academy did some work on them. And now we're going to take this clay of a rookie officer and we're going to mold it into a good professional officer. But you have to kind of think about how we're going to do this to make officers and train officers properly and get retainable officers to hang around. Okay, do not micromanage your trainee and, and tell them everything and not let them feed, give you feedback because you want them to think on their own, right? When you turn them loose from training, you're going to turn them loose into the criminal world of inmates and they have to watch these inmates and sometimes they're going to be all alone. So when you turn them loose, you want that mold to be solid. So listen to me. Let them give you feedback. If you just describe everything and never hear back from the rookie officer that you're training, how are you going to know they understand what they're saying? Look, you rookie officers don't get offended about what I'm saying. You're a rookie. You need to listen and pay attention. Please ask questions if you don't understand something. And and trainees, trainers don't get upset. If they say, can we stop for a second? I don't quite understand that last thing. You know, you have to have a positive attitude yourself as a trainer. Don't say, good God, I've explained that to you twice already. What's wrong with you? Come on, explain it again. Because we have to make sure the trainee knows. You're going to evaluate them, and you evaluate truthfully. That's why we don't become their buddies during the training period. Okay? You want to be honest. They did not do very well in this area, I, I suggest some remedial training or some extra training. Don't just rush through this training, skip through and sign the paperwork and turn them loose. We want you to mold a good officer and, and be honest on their training evaluations. 
You know, some places do a daily evaluation. Some do a weekly evaluation. It depends on where you work, how, how they want to do their evaluations, you know, for your, for your agency. Very important, this step. This first year for, of training for a rookie officer is so important to get them right, to get them in the mind frame they need to be in, you know, to, to let them know that they are there to be counted on. And when an officer's in trouble, you better be there. You better not be around the corner watching or running for help. You better be there. And we need to know that we can count on them to do the job correctly. Okay. Everything. It's a tough job being a trainer if you're going to do it correctly. Now, if you're just going to walk through the steps and sign their paperwork, then it's not that tough of a job. But if you want to be a good trainer, it's a very hard job. So rookies, don't overspeak or speak over your trainer. Wait till they're done talking and then ask your question. Don't butt in and say, well, in the academy, I was taught this way. You know, it's okay maybe if you want to give a scenario, but don't act like you know everything when you come in. You don't. Rookies, don't take this as offense. If you take it as offense, then I'm a little worried because you're you're already in the mindset that you know everything and that's not good. We don't want that. Listen, learn. Yes, ask questions and don't be afraid to ask questions, but don't think you know everything because you read some books. Okay, I have a master's degree. Does that mean I know everything? Heck no. I just learned something the other day from uh, doing a um, YouTube with uh, three other experts. You know, I just learned something new. You know, and look how long I've been at it. You know, 38 years in government, 28 years in correction. So I'm learning still today. You don't know it all. You're a, you're a piece of clay when you're a rookie officer. We need to mold you. So be a team player when you're a rookie. Listen, learn, positive attitude, stay energetic, and, and I pray that you get a trainer who has a positive attitude, who's energetic, and who wants to teach you the right way, okay? And trainers, when you are training uh, these rookies, please let them know when it's all said and done that you are available to them for future questions, future inquiries, because when we turn them loose from the training program uh, and then they're put on their own, they're still in their probationary year now, they still are going to need some guidance and help, okay? And rookies, you're going you're gonna to learn a lot of things on your own as well, trial and error. Just make sure that you know the policies and procedures so that during your trial and error, your trainers, your supervisors can get you in the office and coach you, correct you, and turn you in the right direction without you getting any paperwork or getting in trouble, okay? And a pet of mine, as you well know, because of my books, Corruption Behind Bars and Inside the Inner Circle, please, please never fall for an in, inmate manipulation and fall into a trap and get yourself in trouble criminally or administratively by doing favors for inmates. We don't do that. And trainers, when you're training these folks on all the policies and procedures and how you do your job, get that in there. Get some ethics in there. Would you please for the officers? Tell them up front, you know, you're coming here to do a job you're not coming here to, to uh, play with the inmates. You're not coming here to be their buddy. And by all means, you're not coming in here to give them anything that they're not allowed to have. And tell those rookies what will happen, that they'll be walked out in handcuffs if they bring contraband to an inmate or become their friend and get involved with them physically even. It happens. Throw that in there, trainers. They need to know. The truth is the truth. Make it right, make it strong, and everybody be positive on both sides as the rookie and the trainer. Thank you very much, Gary York, True Prison Stories.